Hello, my name is Robert Hansen. And I'm Chris Hansen. And we will be your certified pistol instructors for USA Tactical's online handgun training course. One thing that I do want to emphasize is please do not handle any firearms during this video. Please watch the video in its entirety and do not handle anything until you are comfortable with the information that you have received. Let's start with how we should always handle a gun. You should always treat every gun as if it is loaded even if you were the last person to handle the gun. You should also always make sure that every gun is safe and clear. When we say safe and clear, we mean that you have personally picked up the gun, checked to see that there is no ammunition in the gun or the barrel. So on a semi-automatic pistol, the first thing we will do is we'll pick the firearm up, making sure that we keep our finger in a safe trigger finger position alongside the frame. Rotate the gun over. Using your finger, you will push the magazine release placing your hand underneath so that you can catch the magazine as it comes out. Now at this point we will have to slide the slide back and manually lock it in place using the slide stop. Typically on a semi-automatic if you have an empty magazine in the gun when you slide the slide back it will lock open automatically. Since we have removed the magazine we will have to use the slide stop to manually lock that slide back. So keeping your finger in the safe trigger finger position still rotate your hand down a little bit so that you can reach the stop, slide the slide back, pushing up on the stop at the same time. That will lock the slide open. Once we check and make sure that there are no ammunition inside the barrel, we are now safe and clear. As with any gun, you want to make sure that the gun is safe and clear. So on a revolver, we'll pick the gun up, making sure that we keep our finger in a safe trigger finger position, rotating over, we might have to rotate our hand just a tad. Using our thumb, we will push on the cylinder release while taking our off hand on the back side. We will put these two fingers on this cylinder. We need to push on the cylinder and the release at the same time. So push together. That will allow the cylinder to come out. We want to check and make sure that there are no rounds in any of the cylinder openings. At this point, the gun is safe and clear. There are four rules for safe gun handling. First is to always treat every gun as if it is loaded. Second is to always keep your finger off the trigger until you are ready to shoot. Third is to always point the gun in a safe direction. Fourth is to keep the gun unloaded until you are ready to use it. Remember to always make sure any gun you pick up is checked to be safe and clear. If the first rule is followed, the likelihood of an accidental discharge is greatly reduced. Simply put, if you assume that every gun is loaded and treat it as such, you are already off to a safe start. The second rule of keeping your finger off the trigger is just as important. A common mistake people make is that they do not place their trigger finger in a safe trigger finger position. Safe trigger finger position is having your trigger finger placed alongside the frame of the pistol above and away from the trigger guard. Do not place your finger in the trigger guard. That should only happen when you're ready to pull the trigger. The third rule is to always point the gun in a safe direction. Never point a gun at anything you do not want to destroy. Safe direction is something that will always change with your surroundings. It is important to always think about what is around you. Remember that bullets go through walls and there can be other people on the other side of those walls. Also, what goes up must come down. So pointing the gun up is never a good idea. The fourth rule is to keep the gun unloaded until you are ready to use it. Now this rule will be based upon how you are using the gun. If you are going to a shooting range, then you would not want to load the gun until you are on the range and ready to shoot. Now if you are carrying the gun in a concealed manner, you have to decide how you want to carry that gun. Load it with or without a round in the chamber. This is a personal decision that you should make based on your comfort level and the skill level with your gun. With gun ownership comes a responsibility. That gun is always your responsibility, regardless of whether it is with you or not. If you do not have the gun in your possession, it is your responsibility to make sure that unauthorized and untrained individuals do not have access to that gun. That means that you should have the gun locked away securely if it is not on your person. You should also make sure that you are familiar with the laws that pertain to gun ownership. Those laws include, but are not limited, to conceal carry laws. 
You should also never handle a gun if you have been drinking or doing drugs. Both impair your judgment and therefore should never be used if you plan on handling a gun. It is your responsibility to make sure that the gun is kept away from children. If you choose to teach your children about guns, you need to make sure they are taught correctly. You need to teach your children the proper reaction if they come across a gun. That is to leave the area immediately, take any other children with them, and get an adult. They should never touch or handle a gun without proper adult supervision. It is also your responsibility to make sure your gun is always in safe working condition. That includes keeping your gun clean, which will help the gun function properly. Refer to your owner's manual for recommended cleaning and how to clean your gun properly. Make sure that you store your ammunition safely as well. Keeping your ammunition in a cool, dry spot is best for prolonging the life of your ammunition. There are two main classifications of handguns. You have semi-automatic pistols and revolvers. There are various types of semi-automatic pistols to include double action, single action, double action only, and strike or fire pistols. For revolvers, there are single action and double action. While all of these guns function a bit differently, the four safety rules we discussed apply to all of them. So let's start by introducing you to the semi-automatic pistol. This is an example of a semi-automatic pistol. The main parts of a semi-automatic pistol are the barrel, the frame, and the action, which includes the slide and the parts within the frame. The parts of the semi-automatic pistol are the slide, the trigger, the magazine release, the magazine, the takedown lever, and the slide stop, the hammer, and the safety. Now, not all semi-automatics will have all of these components, and they may not be shaped exactly the same. This is where you should refer to the owner's manual of your specific gun. If you don't have it, you can download those from most of the manufacturer's websites. The semi-automatic pistols are most common today. We will start with them and go over how they operate. The double action semi-automatic pistol is a gun that can be fired by both manually cocking the gun and then pulling the trigger or by using the trigger to both cock and fire the gun. The single action semi-automatic pistol is a gun that the trigger is only used to fire the gun. It will not cock the firing mechanism. The recoil action is what recocks the hammer for the next shot. The double action only pistol is a gun that can only be fired by pulling the trigger to cock and fire. It cannot be cocked in a single action stage. The striker fire pistol is a gun that does not have a hammer. The striker is a linear driven spring loaded part that strikes the primer. The striker replaces both the hammer and firing pin that is found on the other semi-automatic pistols. The main parts of a revolver are the barrel, the frame, and the action that is contained within the frame. The parts of a revolver are the cylinder, the trigger, the cylinder release latch, the ejector rod, and the hammer. Once again, not all revolvers will have these components in the same spot or they may not be shaped the same. Please refer to your owner's manual for detailed information on your particular gun. The double action revolver functions similar to the double action pistol and that cock in the action, then pulling the trigger can fire the gun. You can also cock and fire the gun by just pulling the trigger. The single action revolver has to have the hammer cocked manually. The trigger fires the gun. In a single action revolver, the trigger can only fire the gun. You will have to manually cock the hammer every shot. There is no recoil action that will reset the hammer such as in a semi-automatic pistol. We will now cover unloading, loading, and clearing a semi-automatic pistol. 
As you pick up the gun, make sure that your finger is along the frame. Next thing we want to do is drop the magazine. You will push the magazine release while keeping your hand under the magazine to keep it from falling to the ground. We now need to slide the slide back. There are a variety of ways to do this and they are all okay as long as you are safe in the process. My personal preference is to hold the gun as follows. Keeping your finger off the trigger, I would grab the slide with my weak hand. Then I would push down on the gun with my strong hand. That will give you the most grip on the gun and allow you to use all of your strength to operate the slide. The other way most people will do this is just grab the slide from the top and pull it back. Either way is fine as long as you remain safe. Once you have the slide back, you will have to lock the slide back. Usually if you have an empty magazine in the gun, the slide will lock back on most semi-automatics. Since our magazine is out, we will have to manually lock back the slide. On most semi-automatics, there will be a slide stop. So what we need to do is manually lift this stop to hold the slide back. You may need to adjust your hand a little bit to make this possible. Just remember to always keep your finger off the trigger and keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. To load a semi-automatic pistol, First, we will load the ammunition in the magazine. Then you will place the magazine in the gun. Once the magazine is seated correctly and locked in place, you will either pull back and release the slide, or you will use a slide release to let the slide go forward and load around into the chamber. Once you have this done, the gun is ready to fire. Now, to unload the gun, you would want to put on the safety if the gun has one, or you may want to use a decocker if your gun has that feature. You will drop the magazine using the magazine release. Make sure to put your hand under the magazine to catch it. Now you will want to pull and hold back the slide to remove the round that is in your chamber. You may have to turn off the safety in order to do this on some guns. Depending on the gun and how hard you pull back the slide, the ammunition could just drop out of the gun or it could pop out and almost fly out of the gun. The important thing is that you see the ammunition come out of the gun. You will then want to lock back the slide manually, inspect the gun, and make sure that there is not any ammunition in the gun to include the barrel. Once you have this done, the gun is now unloaded, safe, and clear. Now that our gun is safe and clear, we need to load our magazine. So we will pick our magazine up, and if you notice, the magazine actually has a little slant this direction. This is the front of your magazine. One other thing I want to note is that these ridges in the back of the magazine, as I push down a little bit, you might be able to see, these are actually what hold your ammunition in place. So when you load, we're gonna put our magazine in our offshoot in hand. Remember, when we load a round, we have to push down and back at the same time. So we will push this in, pushing down and back, and now it seats below those ridges and that keeps our ammunition in place. Remember, down and back, and you will continue to do that until your magazine is full or you've put the number of rounds you'd like to have in there. Once again, the biggest thing to remember is you still have to push down and back as you load the ammunition. Now that that's done, your magazine is loaded. Now that we have our magazine loaded, we're going to need to chamber around. To do that, we will pick the gun up, keeping our finger still in the safe trigger finger position. Rotate the gun over, place the front of the magazine inside the grip, and give it a firm solid hit so that it seats well. Now in order to release the slide, we are going to go back to the slide stop and we will release it and that will make our slide go forward. One thing to remember is keep your finger in a safe trigger finger position. You might need to rotate your hand or even use two thumbs. Push down, that slides your slide forward. There is now a round in the chamber. At this point, put your safety on and your gun is now ready to fire. At this point, we have a loaded gun, so we'll need to unload the gun safely. So we'll pick the gun up, keeping our finger in the safe trigger finger position and the gun always pointing in a safe direction. We're gonna rotate around, push the magazine release, catch the magazine as it comes out. Now we still have a round in the chamber, so we need to remove that safely. We'll have to turn off our safety, still keeping our finger in a safe trigger finger position and the gun pointing in a safe direction, we're gonna grip the slide and pull it firmly backwards so that the round that's in the chamber comes out. 
Now, we did see that round come out of the chamber, but we still need to make the gun safe and clear, which is to lock the slide back to make sure that there is no more ammunition in the chamber. So rotating our thumb around again, we will slide the slide back, push up on the slide stop to lock the slide back. We can visually inspect that there is no ammunition in the gun, and now the gun is safe and clear. We will cover loading, unloading, and clearing a double action revolver. As always, we will make sure that we have our finger in a safe trigger position. We will want to look for the cylinder release latch. You will grip the revolver in your right hand and using your right thumb, you will push the cylinder release latch. You may have to adjust your grip so that you can reach the cylinder release latch easily. As you push on the latch, you will want to take your other hand and place it on the back side of the revolver. As you do this, you will want to push on the cylinder from the back side. This will cause the cylinder to pop out. Remember to do this as you have the cylinder release latch pushed. You will have to have pressure on both the latch and the cylinder at the same time. You will want to do this with the barrel slightly pointed down and down range because if there is ammunition in the gun, it could fall out of the gun if tilted backwards. After you have the cylinder open, you will want to hold the gun in your left hand and cradle it so that you can spin the cylinder with your thumb. You will want to make sure that the cylinder is clear and that there is no ammunition in it. For loading a revolver, it is a pretty straightforward process. You will load each round into the open cylinder spots. You will just rotate the cylinder with your thumb. Once you have all the spots filled, you will grip the gun with your right hand again, remembering to keep your finger off the trigger. You will then rotate the cylinder back into the frame with your left hand. Once it is in the frame, you will want to rock the cylinder back and forth, make sure it locks into place. Once it is locked, the gun is loaded and ready to fire. Now that our revolver is safe and clear, we need to load the revolver. So we'll pick the revolver up, we'll set it in our off hand, using our thumb to rotate the cylinder. We're going to take and we'll put the ammunition in each one of the openings in the cylinder as we rotate it around with our thumb. Once we have all the openings in the cylinder loaded, we will grab the gun in our shooting hand again. Still remember to keep our finger in a safe trigger finger position. Take our off hand and rotate the cylinder back into the frame. Once it's there, we're just going to give it a little rock to make sure that the cylinder locks into place. At this point, the gun is ready to fire. Now that we have a loaded revolver, we need to unload the revolver safely. So we're going to pick the gun up, as always keeping our safe trigger finger position and keeping the gun pointed in a safe direction. Rotate the gun around, rotate our hand if needed so that we can reach the cylinder release latch. Using our off hand, push on the latch and top the cylinder out at the same time. Now, at this point, we can just tip the revolver back and they might all come out. or Sometimes the rounds might not come out. In that case, we'll use our ejection rod and we will push on the ejection rod, which in turn slides out the ammunition with this part of the plate. And as you release the rod, it goes back in. Now your gun is empty and safe and clear again. There are five fundamentals of pistol shooting. They are aiming, breath control, hold control, trigger control, and follow through. These five fundamentals should be performed with every shot. Aiming is the process of achieving the proper relationship between the target, the front sight, and the rear sight. The two most important shooting fundamentals are aiming and trigger control. Aiming consists of sight alignment and sight picture. When we talk about sight alignment, we are referring to the proper relationship between the front and the rear sights. The tops of the front and the rear sights should be even across the top and the front post should be centered evenly between the rear sights. Sight picture refers to the relationship between the aligned sights and the target. A six o'clock hold places the top of the front sight at the six o'clock position on the target. A center hold places the top of the front sight in the center of the target. The downside to a center hold is that you cover up your target that leads to impaired vision. Breath control minimizes the body movement produced by breathing. Take a breath before each shot. 
Just breathe normal and there is a natural pause in your breathing between when you exhale your breath and the start of taking your next breath. That is when you would like to fire your shot because your body is not moving from the act of breathing. Hold control allows the shooter to maintain the proper sight alignment and sight picture while firing. A proper grip is critical to achieve hold control. Trigger control is the proper method of activating the trigger to minimize movement while shooting. Trigger control is the second most important shooting fundamental. The trigger should be placed between the fingertip and the first joint of the index finger. The trigger is squeezed straight back in a smooth, continuous movement. The trigger squeeze should produce a surprise break. You should not anticipate the gun firing. Just pull smooth until it does. Follow through is the continuation of all the fundamentals of shooting through and immediately following the shot. The follow through enables you to maintain and continue the fundamentals through the shot and allows you to be set up for the next shot. Stance and grip are important parts of shooting as well. When you grip the gun, you want to start with a good grip. So you will pick up the gun in your shooting hand. Grip it firmly, but not overly tight. I would say the force you would use on a firm handshake. While keeping your finger off the trigger, you will wrap your bottom three fingers around the front of the grip. Now you will want to take your other hand and lay the meat of your hand in the open spot of the gun and then wrap your fingers on top of your other fingers. Then lay your thumbs flat alongside the frame. The two stances I want to go over are the isosceles and the weaver. The isosceles stance is one in which the gun is held straight out from the body with both arms straight and your body is square to the target. This stance lines you up the straightest with your target. You'll want to start with your feet shoulder width apart and have your knees slightly bent. Now you want to hold the gun straight out and slightly push forward. That will give you a solid base to help absorb the recoil from shooting and get you back on target the quickest. In the weaver stance, the body is slightly angled in relationship to the target instead of facing it squarely. The elbows are flexed and pointed downward. The strong side arm pushes out while the weak hand pulls back. This push-pull tension is the chief defining characteristics of the weaver stance. The weaver is a better self-defense stance, but as with anything, it takes practice to get good at shooting from that position. It is a better position because it slims down your profile, which is useful if you're in a self-defense scenario. There are various types of ammunition. The most important thing to remember is to use the proper ammunition for your gun. The cartridge designation is going to be marked on the pistol as well as noted in the manual. One important item to pay attention to is that there are different types of ammo noted as plus P and plus P plus. This ammunition produces more power and higher pressure than standard ammunition. Not all firearms are designed to handle the increased pressure. Make sure your gun is capable of firing plus P ammunition. A good rule of thumb is to not use plus P until you are fully comfortable with your gun. While there are advantages, we recommend not using it until you have a firm understanding and are comfortable with your gun. There are three types of cartridge malfunctions. These are misfires, hang fires, and squib loads. A misfire is the failure of a cartridge to ignite when the primer or case rim is struck by the firing pin. What you will feel when you have a misfire is nothing. You will pull the trigger and just feel a click with no bang. Misfires are usually defects in the cartridge or pistol. A hang fire is a perceptible delay in the ignition of the cartridge. This delay may last up to 30 seconds. When a cartridge fails to fire immediately, you will not know if it is a misfire or a hang fire. So anytime you have a cartridge that does not fire, you should keep the gun pointed in a safe direction for at least 30 seconds before the action is open to remove the cartridge. A squib load is a cartridge that develops less than normal pressure or velocity upon ignition. A squib load can cause a bullet to fail to exit the muzzle and actually lodge in the bore. You will notice a squib load because it just won't feel like the other rounds you've fired. You will notice reduced noise and recoil. If you have a squib load, you should stop firing immediately and safely open the action to check the bore for obstructions. With any cartridge malfunction, you can safely continue shooting after you clear this misfire. If you have multiple cartridge malfunctions from the same box of ammunition, you should stop using that ammo and try a new box. 
If you continue to have cartridge malfunctions after changing your ammo, you should have your gun checked by a qualified gunsmith. I just want to thank you for choosing USA Tactical for your training. I would like to remind you to always stay current on your practice and training as well as the current gun laws. I don't know is never a good excuse or reason to not follow the laws. It is your responsibility to make sure that you know the laws and are comfortable with carrying a gun. Thank you again and good luck on your test.